Uh, hey, David, uh, we are here talking about Night Gallery. Uh, hopefully you can see this, uh, seasons one and uh, season two that they just uh, released. And it's like three seasons in the entire set. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's one more coming. Yep. Um, but season two, I think, has arguably the creepiest episode of maybe any anthology Um and I'm trying to think what it was called exactly, but it was like the earwig uh, episode. Patrick McNane. Yes. Mm -hmm. Linig uh, Linigan's something. It's very famous. Um, I, if I oh, have... it's called the caterpillar. The caterpillar. Well, and yes, well, what a horrible idea. Yeah. That you go through hell, this thing going from one end of your, from the, the right ear all the way through your brain to the left. Then when it's removed and the doctor looks at it, he says it laid eggs all the way through. Mm. Oh, <laughs> that just gives me ah! No wonder Stephen King got a shock. Um, yeah, I don't like creepy crawlies, so um, no but one. Also, no but, one. Yeah, but I think it, it it's one of those things where it leaves a lot uh, to the imagination because this guy is talking about like this searing agony that this guy's in with this like thing this caterpillar that's like it's lawrence harvey the actor isn't it lawrence harvey um yes well, you're right. i don't think you know let's talk about the night gallery episodes besides that because the pilot for night yeah. gallery is joan crawford directed by steven spielberg yeah. and i think it's also one of the best. The oh, other one, Rowdy McDowell is kind yes. of, just, oh, <laughs> you know, Rowdy running around, you know, uh, screaming. <laughs> Was it for Fortecue or? Fortecue, Fortecue. <laughs> yes. You know, and uh, uh, George McCready mm -hmm. in a wheelchair with no dialogue. Um, George McCready, of course, from Gilda with Rita Hayworth. And yeah, now we, Maurice, Kubrick. So um what do, what do you think of the series like as a whole, as far as like really good like horror anthology shows? Like where would you put this in the greatest of all the anthology shows was Thriller with Boris Karloff. Mm -hmm. Not to be topped. Incredible once they got into gothic horror and supernatural horror. Second to Thriller, of course, would be, uh, now we're talking horror stories because Twilight Zone is science fiction. They very rarely got into horror. The few times they did was uh, the one with uh, uh, the Howling Man. Yeah. Occasionally they would go off, but very rare. And uh, my problem is I don't like Rod Serling's writing. I think he's very preachy. I think, He's very preachy. And uh, I prefer the ones that he just introduces, to be honest. Yeah. Of those return, um, the one with Vincent Price, where my brother is calling me to mass. It was Robert Block's <laughs> Return of the Sorcerer, but it's called, uh, I wish I had my box here. I could easily go through the episodes. But, and then Class of 99 also has Vincent Price in it. And uh, a little, some of the little throwaways, you know, like uh, Grayson Hall and the other lady, the shadows on the wall. <clears throat> you have to take that series. Night Gallery is a product of its time. Yeah. Those shows are rather, uh, what? not the word juvenile is not what I want to use. They're, uh, they're kind of lightweight. Yeah. And the production values are a bit rushed, but it's television. Yeah. And uh, there were enough of the really good episodes 
that the ones that weren't, you know, it's like an anthology movie, Mike. How many anthology movies from Tales from the Crypt to uh, From a Whisper to a Scream? Is there like, you have four stories or three stories. One's a standout. Yeah. All right, let me do something. Your generation will appreciate Creep Show 2, The Raft. <laughs> the Raft. Yeah. Otherwise, forget it. The Raft. Yeah. And uh, that's the way it is with Night Gallery. You have maybe several episodes that don't quite mesh. Then one comes along like the, the uh, caterpillar, and there you are. Yeah. But you can't, not everyone's going to be a caterpillar, see? But yeah. among those that I like, I like the ones I mentioned with Price. Uh, the one, the girl, the vampire, uh, was it Leslie Ann Warren about the barge with the vampire on it? And the one with the Phantom oh, yeah. Farmhouse. And let us not forget the best episode, which is not Caterpillar. The greatest episode of Night Gallery is the one Orson Welles narrates about silent snow. Oh, yeah. Why Stephen King didn't mention that, did he? He was probably on a coffee break. <laughs> um yeah no i mean it, it's it's what's what's really nice i love um revisiting stuff like this because uh as you say there's uh you know sometimes you have to wait through the crap to get to the gold you know what i mean like i certainly do i live in hollywood <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well you know a night gallery also brought lovecraft yeah. pickman's model and uh cool air those are all okay. great episodes why are we just talking about the caterpillar shame on you stephen king <laughs> and Joe Hill, just with a um, um, yeah, there's there's some really interesting ones and i know you mentioned the one with um joan crawford which i think is um it's a tremendous episode and she's brilliant yeah. and i really love how so i was um while i was doing some research for this uh, i was listening to the commentary track um on that one and um they said that you know Joan Crawford was so enamored by Steven Spielberg that she kind of championed him like she being very was, solid but she started out wanting him fired she yeah. told mm -hmm. Wasserman the day before they went on set she said I insist you get rid of that boy I've been in the business too long to be directed by amateurs mm -hmm. and Lou said give him a day Joan by the end of the day she was his she realized he was something and Barry Sullivan, her co-star in that, stopped filming and turned to the crew and said, you quit disrespecting your director or I'm walking. Yeah. Are um, crews that bad? I mean, God, you just started hearing crews get uppity and, <laughs> and mouthy. Is that the way it works? I don't know. I've never been on a set where the crew's acting up like that. But yeah, yeah, and this was like pretty late in her career, if I'm- It was the end of her career. She died in 72. Yeah, it looks like it was a show called The Sixth Sense, which- Yes, um, Gary Collins was the host. Um, which I had never heard of, but the plot sounds- It's on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> um, I feel like everything is. It's, it's, it is, I'm on YouTube, but I, you know, I have to keep getting them to take my price interview off. Someone keeps posting it. How can I sell it if 4 million people look at it first? Right. Um, yeah, no, it's, um, you know, it's interesting because um, it's another one of those, the, the, the Crawford um, Night Gallery episode is, it's one of those that I think um, really has some interesting things to say, but I, I think it doesn't in a way that it doesn't feel preachy or it doesn't like hit you over the head with its, message um that's because rod serling didn't write it <laughs> i'm so mean but you know sometimes these guys they have feet of clay we all do would you be interested in doing like a, a track for like season three is there well if there's anything left my god i'm always <laughs> i'm always a bridesmaid never a bride <laughs> you know i knew some of these people i mean the devil is not mocked is about Nazis going to Dracula's castle. Dracula's played by Francis Letterer, who mm -hmm. I interviewed. Uh, and anyway, I interviewed Francis. I, I Yes, I would love to. I And I definitely, if, if anyone's listening, hello out there, if <laughs> Thriller gets on Blu-ray, please give me the Reggie Nalder episodes. Who else knew him like I did? Yeah. Now, Night Stalker's a horror series too. How would you compare that to Night Gallery? 
Uh, so I'm a big Night Stalker fan. So I, I, I think I like it more than Night Gallery, but um, I, I always think that that's such a fun show. I really love the the we two. Do the Spanish Moss episode. Mm, that's a good one. I, I, I know that. Um, so I, I'm guessing that, like, if you would have, if, if, you know you would definitely say like Thriller is the peak like horror anthology. Uh, you know why it is? Because they used classics short stories from Arkham House. Do you know what Arkham House is? Arkham House was a publishing company in Sauk City, Wisconsin mm -hmm. that was created by August Dearleth to represent and, and give a home to the works of H.P. Lovecraft. Yeah. And from the 40s and the 50s, these books were printed in limited editions a number of the stories in Thriller are taken from those and adapted by people like Robert Block, William F. Nolan, people like that. Um, yeah, it, it's, no, as soon as you Weird said Arkham, from huh? the 20s. What's that? Weird Tales Magazine from the 20s. Hmm. Yeah, as soon as you said Arkham, I was thinking like Lovecraft. Um, so, um, yeah, I think, um, you know, Night Gallery is pretty, pretty uneven, but I think it does, like we said, have some really amazing sort of episodes. Um, well, the Lovecraft know. episodes, so Pickman's model is pretty good with Bradford. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Cold Air. Uh, the two we just mentioned that would uh, establish Night Gallery, uh, the one with Crawford and the one with Rowdy McDowell. And subsequently, the Orson Welles is brilliant. There's no way you can say that Night Stalker is better than Night Gallery. <laughs> now that we've just said all this. I know. <laughs> because you do realize, because I've got those sets too. They're very repetitive, those episodes. Yeah. Why would I anyone mean, live in Chicago if it's full of monsters? I've never seen a major city <laughs> so full of monsters. Have you? Yeah, I know. It, it, it definitely doesn't hold up on scrutiny, but I do... I do like. Oh, I like it. Don't get me wrong. I love all this stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I mean, no, definitely. Like, like I, I love Night Gallery though too. I love how. But you know, it's not a competition. They're yeah. all great. Um, yeah, certainly there are some like duds in the Night Stalker. Um, but yeah, I, I just, I think that um, it's kind of great talking about some of these um, underappreciated night, night gallery um, episodes because, again, you know, you only hear about a handful of the really famous episodes, um, but you don't maybe hear enough about, um, as you say, like some of the, the Lovecraftian, um, like, episodes or, um, you know, ones that definitely don't really get um discussed enough so well you know the one and only time that i actually met rod serling in person i'll tell you because i i just i don't think i've ever told this story <clears throat> i was living in san francisco where i went to, to college and there was a part of uh chinatown that had a, a, a theater that played movies they changed the marquee every two days fabulous uh and I, we we all went down there for movies and it was great fun and uh, in this Chinese restaurant, it was run by a lot of TV people that worked at some TV outlet there. And Serling was in town for that. And I saw him over at another table and I was with a friend. And I said, there's Rod Serling. I'm going to write him a note. So I got a piece of paper and I wrote, dear Mr. Serling, I'm a huge fan. And I just want to thank you for bringing H.P. Lovecraft back on television. And the waiter took it over to him. And I watched him look at it and he put it down and he finished talking to his friend. When they paid their check and got ready to leave, he came over to the table and he said, there's probably only a handful of people in San Francisco that know who H.P. Lovecraft is. And it's just my luck to be in a restaurant with one of them. And he said, I'm gonna tell them that they should probably look. I said, yes, it's public domain. It's not gonna cost you a dime. And you know, he was so nice to me and I always remember that. And he was just exactly like you would expect him to be, and he looked great. Oh, nice. Um, no, that's great. Um, that is um, really, I, I, I love to hear when like famous people are 
like really genuine and nice and not stuck up or the worst person all. I ever walked up to so far, you wouldn't believe who it was. <laughs> Carl Weathers. Oh. Hmm. I love him for obvious reasons. But when I walked up to Apollo Creed, <laughs> <laughs> I, I was we were at a, a party, we were at a, a film thing at the Beverly Center, which it was the American film market. And I walked up to him and I said, Mr. Weathers, would you mind if we take some pictures for the magazine? He said, yeah, I do mind. Oh. And he was what looked like this very young Japanese girl. And mm -hmm. I remembered that. Flash forward a hundred years. I'm at another thing about five years ago and much older Carl Weathers was there. And he was with some people and they were all gonna take a picture. And I said, I don't think I wanna take this picture. So yeah. I gave them, I have spoken. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, you know, I guess some people get just when they're out in public, they don't want to be bothered. But then if you know, if you feel like that, why are you at the opening of something? Yeah, I mean, it's not like- It's it, not like it I was, went in a restaurant and said, oh, right. would you? and I certainly wouldn't ask him for an autograph. Yeah, I mean, that's, um, yeah. I mean, it's a shame that, that some people are like that, but I bet like, so okay, who would I you just say? seen Action Jackson too? Oh okay. Um, I love, have you seen that? It's fabulous. I haven't seen that yet. Um, Action so, Jackson. You say was the nicest uh, celebrity you. Vincent Price. You don't even have to. <laughs> Vincent Price. Vincent Price. Uh, I've met a lot of great people. I mean, uh, Bo. Went not bow, which is the bow, not the bow that died. What bow is left? Is it Bo Spenson? Bo Spenson. Mm -hmm. I met him at a party and we he he called me up. He had a script he wanted me. He says, You need to be on the other side of the camera, young man. And I wasn't a young man either, but he was he was great. There are a lot of great people. Michelle Nichols was wonderful. I uh will probably, I guess we'll probably wrap this up, but um you know, uh, just wanted to also just mention that these are both available uh, and I will link them in the description. Um, you know what, let's get My Living Doll, The Horror of It All and Thriller um, out on where they need to be. Yes, I, we're, we both have spoken. We both have spoken. Maybe uh, <laughs> that could be the name of the podcast. I have spoken. Yes, oh my gosh. I, you said you were working on a, a doing a podcast, right? Last yes, time it's talking? called Caught in a Celluloid Jam. Nice. I love that. And it's not like just the, going to be horror, being me, because, you know, I go all over the place. Uh, I, I love that. I, I think that I could, like, listen to you talk for hours. I have listened to you talk for hours well, on your you commentary go. tracks. Well, um, I'm lucky. I don't have to listen to myself talk for <laughs> hours, so... <laughs> But no, I love it. We I know each other. I don't know. I met you when you were still doing a, an eyeball in my soup or whatever. Yeah, was. gosh, that was over 10 years ago. Um, let's, not get, let's not get funky. <laughs> <laughs> was yeah. that, wait a minute, Mikey. Was that 10 years ago? What's that? Was that 10 years ago? Yeah, I, I think. Um, you must have been 12 when we did that. Ah. Uh, <laughs> come on, come on. Um, well, I'm 25 at holding, so. Yeah, well, we're not going to get into what I'm holding. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, when, uh, speak, so speaking of your podcast, and, and you know, we love to uh, do some plugs uh, around here. Um, so what, uh, when do you uh, think that that's going to be out or? Um... Well, I'm working on it right now, and uh, I've recorded some stuff, and I plan uh, to have some guests. Sadly, on a sad note, I was working, well, I've been working on this for several months. So I wanted my first guest to be Clue Gulliger. Mm. But unfortunately, that's not going to happen. Yeah. So um, it's taught me a lesson to get, get on with it because none of us are here forever. Yeah. And, uh, uh, you know, Clue was such a great friend of mine that <clears throat> even though he lived to be in his 90s, it was, those of us in Hollywood love that guy. Yeah, um, such a legend. I mean, like and one he, of the nicest people in this. You want all right? Uh, let me amend that about the best 
celebrity Vincent Price. Second to Vincent Price is Clue Gulliver. There was not, and if you saw him out in public, Mike, if you were an independent filmmaker or just a fan, he would just talk to you like you were his best friend. Yeah, that's, that's, I, I love that. Aaron like, was great too, by the way. Um, I know, like, I'm sure you met her, but like Betsy Palmer was like that too. Betsy Palmer loved me because when I met her, all we talked <laughs> about was Joan Crawford. And I went up to Betsy and I said, you were in Queen Bee with Joan Crawford. She said, you sit down right by me. She said, I was at the wedding between Alfred Steele and Joan, blah, blah, blah. We talked for an hour. Betsy was fabulous. I'm sorry. Oh, she's yeah. yeah, she was, uh, I mean, somebody that was so uh, genuine when we were talking about people that are really just genuinely sweet, nice people. And she, you know, who else is nice that's crazy is Lloyd Kaufman. Yeah. Mm hmm. You can't get away from Lloyd when he gets in his trauma thing. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Well, I'll tell you a quick Lloyd Kaufman. He had a trauma office here in Hollywood years ago. And I was involved with it because they were putting out the monogram Bela Lugosi's briefly. So I went to the office here in Hollywood and there was this young girl that was like at, uh, manning the, 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 the table. She wasn't the man, she was like the secretary. And she had just dropped acid. So she didn't know where she was. Wow. And I'm in there and I'm thinking, oh my God, this office is open for whatever. So I call Lloyd in New York and I said, you got to get somebody here because your, your receptionist is having a trip. And, <laughs> and, so that, and so Lloyd, we wait. I stayed in the office till they got somebody to come in to replace me. Wow. So how about that? <laughs> you know? Like, that I'm is, telling you, you can't make this stuff up. It's all just just live here for a while, and it just yeah, it just it's like being in the ocean. Well, and this is kind of why I'm like so excited for your your uh, podcast because you you know are a treasure trove of these amazing well, stories. You know, it's been a long, long time coming. I didn't think that you know. There's so many podcasts; it's overwhelming. You think, what could I? Well, I just get lost in the sea of podcasts. But so many people want me to do one. I figure that if it's not uber successful, at least it'll be su successful enough to keep going, you know? Yeah. I mean, I, well, listen, I, you have already, you have one listener for sure. Uh, I am, I've, I've always just been so enamored with you and your other, like your contemporaries, because you really are that bridge between like old Hollywood and now, like you, like, I, I think it's so incredible the older film historians that took the time to interview these people. You know, you hustled for your own interview opportunities. Like, I, I think that's, I mean, but, you know, what you give to, um, I don't know if I have the right to call myself a film historian, but you might as well anybody else is. <laughs> 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 you know what's so funny now a lot of them are changing their monikers like and you know tim's a close friend tim lucas is now a, a novelist critic uh and i could name a few others that are now film scholars yeah well so i just shall call myself the emperor and let it go <laughs> yeah. you know um but just but but what you are able to give to uh, future generations of like film fans and scholars and historians or what or whatever moniker uh, you want. It, it's, I think, such an invaluable thing. I, I think it's so. Well, my God, you know, it, that's really all you take out of this world is the the people you love and the and 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 what you give. <clears throat> Material things don't matter. Wealth doesn't matter. The only two things that matter are friends and your health. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, uh, again, thank you so much. And, uh, you know, we'll be in touch. Remember, I have spoken. I have spoken. Okay, <laughs> bye.